Hi, it's Patrick. I'm going to show you how we're going to use the data link feature inside of Expression so that we can actually create a PBUS message which is driven from an Excel spreadsheet so the technical director doesn't have to do any changes but somebody moving around data in an Excel spreadsheet can. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to open up Excel. I've got a taskbar button to get to it here. So here's Excel. I'm opening it and I'm going to create one table and I'm going to make it very simple. So I've got game one, hero, so I'm going to say player one and player two. And I'm going to use some video files that I know already exist just for the sake of this exercise. So I'm going to do t1p1.avi and t1p2.avi because that's team one, player one, and player two. I'm going to surround it all. I'm going to make it into a table the easy way. And I'm going to click on review and share the workbook to allow changes by more than one user. I'm going to say OK. And it's going to ask me to save the file. Now, I'm going to save it on my D drive in my projects folder. I've created a project called Turner Test. Um, and I'm going to save it in my miscellaneous file because that gets formatted in there. And I'm going to call it Turner Test for the sake of what I'm working on. The one thing to note is by default, since I'm using Office 2010, it wants to save things as an Excel um, XLSX. We need it to be saved as an XLS. So it's an Excel workbook for 97, 2003 is a way to think about it. I'm going to click OK, and it's going to prompt me about saving a Microsoft Excel file that's shared workbook. That's fine. I'm going to minimize it for now, and we're going to come back to it. Now, we want to do a couple things here. We're going to be working with this particular expression system, and I want to show you what we're going to do. We want to be able to swap out videos, so I'm going to come back to my Turner test. Here's the project folder. When I created an expression, it created the required subfolders, and I went and I copied some videos in. So I've got T1P1 through T1P13, those files are there, and we're going to be using Excel and expression to change those files remotely from an Excel spreadsheet so that the TD doesn't have to worry about anything. Okay. So I'm going to do one other thing while I'm here. I'm going to show you a quick little shortcut to make sure I get the right expression file name. I'm going to click into the miscellaneous folder, and then I'm going to click into the um, navigation bar, and I'm going to start typing as if I was typing out the path, and the only file it finds is there. I cursor down to it with the keyboard. Once I've done that, I'm going to hold down the shift key, and then I'm going to press home, and it highlights the whole path. I'm going to copy that name, and it's going to come handy for us in a couple minutes. So now I'm just going to minimize that to get that out of the way. Now we're back to expression. We need to do two things. We want to use data link. So in order to use data link, two things have to happen. You've got to be running the data link server. So I'm going to go to my start menu. I'm going to programs and I'm going to find my expression studio. And in expression studio, I've got expression data link server. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to launch it. I'm going to pop up here in just a second. And there it is. Now I've got a bunch of different data link sources I'm playing with for a bunch of different projects. I'm going to click on the add new button. I click Add New, and I get some choices to make a data source for a data link. I'm going to choose ADODB. I'm going to click OK. And it's going to come up with a dialog box to let me start picking through some of this. And I'm going to choose Select Template. That is where I choose what data source type I'm going to use. I'm going to choose from here. I'm going to choose Excel. I'm just going to take the regular Excel for right now, and I've got that in there. I'm going to click OK. And now, I've got a menu where it's looking for the connection string. In other words, this is where I tell it what file I'm going to be linking to. So you see where it says data source equals, and right now it says Excel file. I'm going to put my cursor there. I'm going to highlight all that. Remember, I copied that, and you can figure out why I did it. Now if I just paste it in there, there's my file path. Watch this. I'm going to click Test Connection, and it's going to come back telling me that it's connected successfully. In other words, it says, yes, that file exists. I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to click OK again to close it. It's going to bring me back to my server menu. It wants me to name my data source. I'm going to call it Turner Test. I'm going to enter to accept the name. I'm going to click off the line item and click right back on it. I'm going to click Browse. This is the quick way to see if I've got my data source where I think I've got it, and I do. If I had multiple tables, I would be able to choose them from here, and there's my data source. I'm going to click OK, 
I'm going to close this window. You can click on the X in the top right corner to close it once you've set it up. That's all you need to do with it. Now, the next piece I'm going to do is I'm going to come into Expression and under Project, so it says Data Link Manager, because this is a new project. I need to come up to the top half where it says Data Link Servers. I need to add. And again, I'm running it locally on my computer here. It could be running anywhere on the network. So right now, I'm just going to leave it. It comes up by default called Link Server 1, Local Host, and the port is 8888. That's the default setting, and it should be fine for what we're doing right now. I'm going to click OK, and I have a whole bunch of data sources. I'm going to scroll through the choices, and there's one called Turner Test. And again, once I've set it up, I can close the window by clicking on the X in the top right corner, and I'm good to go. So now I've got a blank message. There's nothing in it. I'm going to go to my Materials Manager at the top right corner. I'm going to tell it I want a new video. And the dialog box for the videos pops up. I'm going to choose T1P1 just because it's easy to do. And you'll see that it pops itself into the screen. I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to do a couple of things here. First off, I'm going to edit. I'm going to choose video. You'll notice there's a path to the file name. And right below it, there's a field that says data link server. It says disabled. Well, let's click on the file navigation button to the right of the disabled. And we're going to choose our data source, which is called Turner Test. We're going to browse to the field we want, and we're going to do player one. And we've chosen by selecting, let's see, with the box under heroes, says T1P1 is highlighted. I've chosen that. We won't see much different happen here, but I'm going to say OK. I'm going to make sure that my mode is set to a loop in the run mode, and I've got it in auto start. That means when I call up this message, it will just begin to play, which is fine for what we're trying to do right now. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to add a quad to my scene. And I'm going to do something else. I'm going to go back to my materials manager just to remind myself. I'm going to rename it. So I'm going to call this dynamic video one just so I don't forget. I'm going to right click. I'm going to assign it to selection and it's there. It's good to go. And you can see it starts to play. Okay. Now I've got just that one that's there. I'm going to come over to my scene manager and I'm just going to add another scene so that I have it. Now I'm going to come back to my scene one. I'm also going to come up to my scene director. And you can see that it already put the video on for me, which is good, so I don't have to worry about it. I'm going to close that up. And now I've got that scene working. I'm going to bring my Excel document up, and I'm going to put it right in front of us here for a second. And I'm going to come in, I'm going to change that to player 9. And I'm going to save my document. And I'm going to change off my sheet and come back to it. Different person change my Excel spreadsheet again. I'm going to make that player... I want to say that this one is a little more fun. We'll see. We'll come off of it. We'll come back to it. Different person again. So this is how I can use an Excel spreadsheet and data link to choose between the different videos that are in the existing folder and I can work with it. Again, playing with Excel, we did this very quickly. This, by theory, could be browsing that file. You could have a data source set up to automatically look for file names. So this becomes a pull-down. You can format your data however you want to do it. I just showed you how we could do this here. So here's a quick test. Again, I'm being able to drive this using Excel.